Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Three Book Adventure. My name is Matt Jarbo, and today we're going to be talking about the new LA Times article breaking down what to expect at Disney's Adventure Campus, talking about the new Spider Man ride, and apparently here, Ant Man outsized food. Don't quite know how I feel about Ant Man sized food, or well, it says outsized, obviously meaning that it's going to be big stuff for your money. But we're going to take a look here at this decor and the key announcements. Uh, brought in this particular thing for when it releases in, uh, I think when it launches actually in July of 2020, I think July 2018 is when it finally comes out. But before we begin, uh, one of the things I want to do is dive into more theme park coverage. That's why this particular subsect is called Three Book Adventure, and this will become uh, its own channel. So keep an eye out for that, and you guys can jump onto that one when the announcement officially comes. But in the meantime, let's take a look here. So coming down here, it says, it asks the question right off the bat, how do we participate was a question that was fueled many early brainstorms for the Avengers campus. This is coming from Scott Drake, who is leading the land's creative uh, development for Walt Disney Imagineering. And that, I believe, is one of the interesting key concepts of what Disney's up to right now is instead of just having a ride that you interact with or in regards to just the ride in general that you just sit on, that now it's more about how do you participate? How do you become part of the experience? Because we're moving into a much more technologically advanced age and they have to start making it more appealing to the digital generation versus the analog generation. At least that's my theory on it. So it says at Avengers Campus, uh, we will be called to engage. See, for instance, the land centipede new ride web slingers. Uh, our centerpiece new ride, Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure, a family-focused attraction that's essentially a large-scale video game built on silly and communal gesture controls. Remember Microsoft's motion sensor home experiment, The Connect? Think of that, only significantly more refined, where writers and players can use their hands to simulate throwing and retracting webs into digital environments. And that, that to me seems like the most amount of fun. Because who doesn't want to larp as spider-man who doesn't want to dive in and play as spider-man swinging through the streets of new york or something although i do believe this one is going to be more probably like what happens in southern california where it's exceptionally flat uh now this is where it gets fascinating it says even the merch is participatory in avengers campus guests will have to resist the urge to buy battle ready toys dubbed spider bots a gift shop will house a mini robot battlefield where a score is kept via a light system on the robotic motion controls. Play has taken on a more prominent role in recent years at Disney Parks, as evidenced by the mobile adventures guests can explore via the Play Parks uh, or Play Disney Parks app and the arcade-like Galaxy's Edge Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Now, to me, that's fascinating because they have done a lot of interactive elements with Galaxy's Edge, where you can use like kind of a QR code reader to like get a bunch of uh, like ancillary information and they want you to be able to walk around and search for stuff and find clues and be able to do it all on the phone. It does give kids something to do while they're waiting in line, making the line cues a lot more uh, bearable, I should say. And th this, again, in the video game era, how do you make these kind of interactive experiences that are going to get the kids on board? I mean, kids who like Minecraft are going to be your primary demographic here. And the fact that they have a battle ready toys that you can buy at the gift shop, that are going to have a mini robot battlefield. This is going to keep people coming back into the fray for quite some time. So if you're a Southern California resident, this is something that you're really, really going to want to get into. If you're like me and you live out of the state and you have to travel into the park or into California to get there, it may not be the biggest thing on the world, but still it's something interesting. Now, this is where, uh, this is what I'm looking forward to here. The web slingers ride. It says a Spider-Man adventure is pitched as sort of a next generation take on Toy Story Midway Mania. Not only are they guests themselves the controllers, but the ride will attempt to marry gameplay with a deeper narrative. And if you can do that, if you can really, really, really kind of hone in on that and marry those two together, a lot of people are really gonna find themselves enjoying the experience a lot more. Now it says here that we will enter the Worldwide Engineering Brigade or the web, a so-called workshop where the likes of Peter Parker, Spider-Man once again played by Tom Holland, which is great that they got Tom Holland. It's not like, you know, it's not like watching Lamp Life, which is the Toy Story 4 short film about Bo Peep's adventure and having Woody be voiced by Jim Hanks. Tom Hanks' younger brother, who doesn't sound a lot like him, but is the voice of Woody when it's not Tom Hanks. 
So at least they actually paid and they got Tom Holland. Although at this point, I don't think they could do anything to get rid of Tom Holland in this particular environment. It says here that they're working on ways to let people, regular folks experience superpowers. When the spider bots, the creepy crawling robotic sidekicks go off the rails, we will be shuttled into another invention, the web slinger vehicle, where we will don 3D glasses and sling webs, aka fling our arms like no one is watching to capture the bots and manipulate the digital environments. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun, especially if there's some kind of score counter. Kind of like think like uh, Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster, right? You want to get the high score. It keeps you coming back to try to do better. And that is honestly one of my favorite rides at Disneyland because it, it it's, it's a lot of fun and it's got a very quick turnaround. Anyway, it says such a communal, lighthearted, family-focused experience saves Disney from trying to concoct an attraction that one-ups the borderline thrill ride that is the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man at Universal's Orlando, Florida theme park, which exists via a deal that predates the Disney acquisition of Marvel. Now, Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure, which joins the Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout, puts an emphasis on zaniness, uh, zaniness boasting no height requirement and appealing directly to generations weaned on video games. And like I keep saying, this is where you have to go with this. You have to make it fun, digital, interactive, uh, put the emphasis on participation. As cool as the Rise of Resistance right is from what it looks like from the videos that I've seen, it, the fact that it's like non-interactive feels like it eventually just kind of like wears out. Whereas a millennia, uh, the Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run, well, you know, you, you have the different positions and there's a score counter. So it, it kind of prompts you to try and run it as a team in order to get the highest score. And that is something that a lot of people, again, who have Southern California uh, SoCal passes can do. The rest of us, we only have maybe one day at the park. We can't wait in line to play it multiple, multiple times. Now, according to Brent Strong here, the creative director uh, with uh, with Disney, Walt, Walt Disney Imagineering, he says here, when you think about Toy Story Midway Mania, it's overtly a game. We're coming in it to play a game. Here, while it's absolutely interactive and has game-like levels to it, you are on a mission with Spider-Man. There is a full narrative arc that accompanies the gameplay of this. The Spider-Bots are getting out of control and they're flooding across the campus. Spider-Man is concocting a plan with your help to defeat them. And again, that kind of interaction is really going to get kids involved. Spider-Man still is, I think, like outside of Iron Man, like the most popular Marvel character, putting him front and center with Tom Holland really does showcase how much they are loving the brand and how much they are wanting to really build off of this. And I think that's going to be uh, fantastic. Now, it goes on here to say Disney's overall messaging is that Marvel's characters are coming into our world with present day, thereby making Avengers Campus a somewhat unique land in that a large percentage of it will look and feel like a contemporary America, albeit reimagined by characters such as Spider-Man and Ant-Man. But if Walt Disney theme park designers cited far off places like Turkey and Morocco as influencing some of the, the design of Galaxy's Edge, Imagineers this time referenced locales that will certainly mo be more recognizable to Southern California park goers. So it's going to look like L.A. Most likely <laughs> it's going to it's going to look like L.A. It's like, hey, if you live in L.A., drive 40 miles south of Anaheim and then and then feel like you're back in L.A. That's good. Thanks, Disney. Continuing on the article, it says, Furthering its play-driven aesthetic, Avengers Campus will borrow lessons learned from Galaxy's Edge when it comes to characters, although it won't worry so much about directly feeding into the broader cinematic narrative. While there will be a traditional meet-and-greet in Avengers Campus, Iron Man is alive and well in this land, and he has some new armor to show off. These photo sessions will be augmented with more of a story-driven encounters. Superhero Thor will be on the hunt for somebody worthy of wielding his hammer, and the presence of his brother Loki will be played as a mystery. So obviously it's not going to be the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even though it is going to basically look like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Iron Man has to be alive. He is a key player. And I don't think anyone is going to freak out on that one. When it comes to Galaxy's Edge, though, them tying it into the First Order storyline is one of the biggest problems that they did. I think that's just one of those things. Uh, anyway, fin uh, going on, it says, thus, if Disney delivers on its promise, Avengers Campus will be an activity-focused land, long teased, for instance, has been an acrobatic Spider-Man, which technically is a robot that will perform stunts 60 to 65 feet in the air above the building housing uh, the attraction. Expect the stunts to be visible throughout the land, and after soaring through the air, a very human Spider-Man will climb down uh, and meet with the guests. And that's going to be a big thing here. You can also go on and 
uh, train with the Black Panther's guards in the dead center of the land. It's not just a pickup uh, kids kind of show. It's for anybody to be involved in. Uh, meanwhile, uh, nearby, Doctor Strange will play host to a magic show in a nook of supernatural ruins. The latter will revival, uh, will rival the Guardians ride in bringing an otherworldly bent to the land. Concept art for Doctor Strange, the Sanctum, uh, showed a place that will appear, appear to glow in the evening. So they're, they are trying to break this up a bit more to give what, what appears to be giving the different characters their own little section, whereas Galaxy's Edge doesn't have that. It's meant to be Batu. It's meant to be its own thing. I get that. Um, and uh, then flanking the land here, it says, uh, will be the glistening silver of the Avengers headquarters, believed to someday act as the entrance for a new ride. But for now, the home to a special effects show, the performance centers on the villain Taskmaster. Uh, you'll also see him, surely not coincidentally, in the upcoming Black Widow film, as well as the Marvel's Avengers video game, attempting to infiltrate the campus, which tells me that they have big plans for Taskmaster following Black Widow. That they, they're going to have to. I mean, Taskmaster is... It's interesting that out of all the villains, they want to build up Taskmaster. I just don't... I don't personally get that, but I'm not against this. I think it should be pretty interesting. And not to uh, do away with the adult entertainment here, it says that a rooftop stage will be visible from a nearby bar and restaurant that will emphasize somewhat adventurous twists, especially when it comes to presentation on fried chicken and even peanut butter and jelly sandwiches while serving beer flights in mini beakers. At the Pim Test Kitchen and Pim Tasting Lab... Referencing characters Ant-Man and the Wasp, the design relies heavily on humor as the latter contains a bar centered around a giant beer can and the former places a pretzel conveyor belt above guests' heads where we'll watch the snacks swell in size. Other food spots will also directly reference films. See the Shawarma Palace cart, a nod to the beloved Avengers post credit scene. And from there, they just want kids to, uh, they just want kids to show up at uh, Disney's Avenger campus. So look, here's the deal. Uh, I'm excited for this. I am. I want to see what they do with this. I did enjoy Galaxy's Edge, although I do acknowledge a lot of the problems with it. I think it'd be very fascinating to see where things go. And I, I hope to attend when I'm in Southern California this summer for San Diego Comic-Con, making that trip up to Disneyland in order to get a, uh, to get a peek, just like I did last year by going to Galaxy's Edge and checking it out with my family. That was a lot of fun. Um, but I'm curious to know with you guys, do you care about this? Is this something you would make the trip to go and see? I mean... Is it just Disney trying too hard to cram IPs down everybody's throat? Or does this seem engaging enough to keep you wanting more? Or are you going to want to wait until you see video footage come from Disneyland in order to determine whether or not it's worth the cost of admission to get in? These are things I want to hear. I will talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on social media at MJarbo. Follow me on there, on Twitter. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.